Thank you, Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary. And she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. You all the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray, pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ, thy Son, was made known by the message of an angel, made by his passion and his cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance remain with us forever. Mary, Queen of Heaven, pray for us. At your right stands the queen in robes of gold, finely arrayed. In nomine Patris et Filii Spiritus Sancti, Gracia Domini Nostri Jesu Christi Caritas de Communicatio Sancti Spiritus, Sitcom omnibus vobis. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Oremos. O God, who made the mother of your Son to be mother and our Queen, graciously grant that we, sustained by your intercession, may attain in the heavenly kingdom the glory promised to your children through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. <clears throat> A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nations shall know I am the Lord, says the Lord your God, when in their sight I prove my holiness through you. For I will take you away from among the nations and gather you from all the foreign lands and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities. From all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from you your, from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you natural hearts. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes. Careful to observe my decrees, you shall live in the land I gave your ancestors. You shall be my people and I will be your God. Verbum Domini. 
I will pour clean water on you and wash away all your sins. Clean heart create for me, O God, steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Give me back the joy of your salvation, the willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your way, and sinners shall return to you. If you are not pleased with sacrifices, should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a contrite heart humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. <clears throat> if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Dominus Rubiscum. Lexio Sancte Evangelii Segunda Mateum. Jesus again in reply spoke to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other sent a servant, saying, Tell those invi invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. Then rest laid, and then the rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. And the king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then the king said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out therefore into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, good and bad alike. And the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there, not dressed in a wedding garment. He said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet, cast him into the darkness outside, where there's wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. Verbum Domini. Well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, the queenship of Mary. So, you know, obviously the fifth... Uh, of the Glorious Mysteries, the fifth of the Glorious Mysteries, and it was just, what, eight days ago, right, that we celebrated the Assumption of, of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So, as often happens in the church here, we had an octave, an octave of grace, intercessory grace of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Did you take advantage of it? Did you take full advantage of it? Or did you just let these eight days go by without thinking about the Blessed Virgin Mary, without thinking about this 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 uh, beautiful period of grace and just squander it? Well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it's not too late because Jesus knows no time and no space, right? And so dedicate today to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Dedicate, as a matter of fact, the last eight days to the Blessed Virgin Mary and ask her to intercede on all of your intentions. So what you really, really need, the deepest intentions in your heart, ask the Blessed Mother today. Ask her to approach her son for the miracles that you need, but most importantly, the miracles of conversion. Of conversion. Of course, that is really what the readings are about today. Now, I could have read the readings for the Queenship of Mary, right? Um, but, you know, Mary is honored so much, and I'm not saying that's not a good thing, that is a good thing, but we tend to hear the readings for the Blessed Virgin Mary over and over and over again. And I'm sure the Blessed Mother will understand that I, and again, this is a memorial, so these readings are not proper to today, so I can read the readings of the day, and that's what I did, all right? Uh, because they're so important, because they are about us being purgated, us being purified, us being perfected, 
so that we can experience eternal salvation at the moment of our death, that we can live as saints and die as saints. God, Jesus, does not want us to spend even one moment in purgatory. And so in the book of Ezekiel, right, we, we, we hear him talking about the grace that he wants to give us, all right, to break our stony hearts and to give us natural hearts, natural hearts, right? And again, what, what, is, what is he talking about here? He's talking about living our lives in such a way that intrinsically, intrinsically, we are mindful of the unborn, the poor, the sick, the thirsty, the naked, the homeless, the hungry, the imprisoned. So that when we die at the separation of the separate at the separation of the sheep and goats, right? We don't even recognize, all right, that that you know the the taking care of the least of Christ's brethren is something that we did, right? Just in the parable of the sheep and goats, they both said, "When did we see you?" And of course, the one group was trying to make excuses, and the other group was what, right? The group that that. Ascended into heaven, the group that was was uh, uh, coming to the wedding banquet and was accepted, right, and embraced uh, by the king that we hear today in the gospel. Why? Because these good acts, these acts of beatitude, were not something that they did. It was who they were, right? It was intrinsic to their being, and that's what it means to you know, to be saint on earth, that we're, we're no longer thinking, we're just doing. It's just automatic. And it comes from the grace of God, that he breaks our stony hearts and gives us natural hearts. We just naturally do this. But this takes a lot of work on our part, a lot of cooperation with the graces that Jesus gives us and the uh, uh, understanding of the how these graces come. For instance, the last eight days, the octave of the Blessed Virgin Mary that was rich with potential intercessory graces that the Blessed Virgin Mary wanted us uh, to have. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. Now, isn't, isn't that interesting, right? Uh, because our Christian brothers and sisters who are not Catholic think that once you're saved, obedience is just, it's a byproduct. It's, it's kind of like not necessary. It's accidental to our relationship. But we as Catholics understand that obedience is intrinsic to our being, right? It's the essence of our being, just as it was the essence of the Blessed Virgin Mary's being, John the Baptist, St. Joseph, right? Uh, the essence of their being, to be obedient. It came natural for them, right? Obedience was not an act. It was a way of life. Humble, loving obedience. All right, so let's get to the gospel. I talked uh, two consecutive days last week with the rich young man who came to Jesus wanting to be saved or finding out uh, whether he, to want to find out whether he was saved or not. And of course, he was saved. Uh, but he wasn't perfect, right? And he found out that what it took to be perfect, he wasn't ready to do. So he walked away dejected uh, because he had many possessions. But that parable uh, that we heard in two parts, that story we heard in two parts, was all about purgatory. Now we're further along in the Gospel of Matthew, and we're hearing about heaven, hell, and purgatory, right? And so let me go through it real quickly, all right? So again, Jesus is, is, is speaking to the chief priests and the elders in parables. So he's really directing them this to them, right? Uh, the kingdom of heaven, right? The kingdom of heaven. Now remember, the kingdom of heaven is not just heaven, right? It's, it's earth, purgatory, and heaven, okay? The communion of saints, the mystical body of Christ, okay? And he's warning... All right, what it's going to take to get to heaven. And that hell is real if we reject heaven. 
So he dispatches his son. Oh, he gives a wedding feast for his son. Now, there's so many layers of symbolism here, right? Because the wedding feast for his son is really, his son is on earth now, and will they accept his son? Will the chief priests and the elders accept his son, the Messiah, right? Jesus, God, right? So he's laying that out. Right, but he's also talking about again in the past what has happened in the past, right? Uh, but he's also talking to each and every single one of us and how the church uh, plays out in every single generation. So he dispatches his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast. All right, so that's the Jews at this point in time, but but uh, indeed it is the chosen, right? Uh, and, but they refuse to come. They refuse to come. And a second time he sent other servants saying, tell them invited, right? The ones who refused. Behold, I prepared my, my wedding banquet. See, God gives us chance after chance after chance. It's ready. It's time is now. It's now, right? It's ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, maltreated them, and killed them, okay? So the holy sacrifice of the Mass is the wedding banquet, right? And how many now, all right, uh, do other things other than Mass, all right? When the wedding banquet is prepared, it's Sunday now, the wedding banquet is ready, but, but now so many are saying, oh, I have this to do, I have this sporting event, or we have this family gathering, or whatever, I have to work, and all this other stuff. Everything is, 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 is interfering, right, with, the, with us coming to the wedding feast, right? Uh, and then others, of course, are just angry, well, I'm not going to the Mass because I see that Mass as deficient or I'm angry at the Pope or I'm angry at my bishop or, or whatever the situation is, right? So they laid hold of his servants, mistreated them and killed them, right? Ridiculed them, persecuted them, right? We see this in the church today, right? The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their cities. Now, what is that a metaphor? Sent them to hell. Sent them all to hell. If you eat my body and drink my blood, you'll have eternal life and I'll raise you up on the last day. If you don't eat my body and drink my blood, you have no life in you. You are dead to me. And I will kill you and I will burn your cities, burn your everything that you thought was near and dear and I will send you to hell. That's what he's saying. That's what this is all about, right? Then the king says to his servants, the feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. To more is given, more is expected. And if they reject it, that's it. Right? So now the servants go out into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever they find. Whoever. Everybody. We're all invited. Right? The good and the bad alike. Now who's that? That's us. That's us. Right? Not that some of us are good and others of us are bad. No, the good and bad alike, we're all good and bad. Right? Sometimes we're good, sometimes we're bad. Right? That matters nothing to God. Come to the wedding banquet. Come to the wedding banquet. Oh, but there's a caveat. There's a caveat before you come. Because you've been good and bad alike, all right? There's a caveat. You need to be dressed for the feast. You need to be washed clean. You need to have two new clothes. You need to be a new wineskin, a new creation, all right, before you sit down at the banquet because you've been good and bad alike, right? And that's it. What does that mean? All right, well, since you've been good and bad alike, you need to be purgated. You need to be perfected. You need to be purified. For nothing imperfect shall enter into heaven, okay? So that's it. All right, so the king enters the feast, though, and he sees one guest not dressed in a wedding garment. His clothes are not washed clean. They're not new clothes, okay? He snuck in, right? Did not want to be purified. Did not feel he had to be purified. All right, but the king's not angry. The king's not angry. He says, my friend, my friend, why are you not dressed for the feast? My friend, just wants a simple answer. Really what she wants is an apology, right? 
And if this man had said, well, King, I'm sorry, I didn't want to be late, uh, please let me go change or let me go wash my clothes or, you know, uh, maybe they can help me find uh, uh, suitable clothes, all right, and then I'll come back. The king would have said, fine, no problem, take him and, and, and take care of him. But he was reduced to silence, which, of course, is a metaphor for, I'm not sorry, and I owe, I owe you nothing, right? If you don't like it, too bad. Right, And of course, the, the traditional preaching is, because it says, then the king said to his attendant, find him hand and feet and cast him into the darkness outside where there's wailing and gnashing of teeth. No, it's send him to hell. You don't want purgatory? You're going to hell. That's it. Right? The traditional preaching here is what? Why was the guy sent out? Because he wasn't dressed for the feast. Right? But... That's only part of it, right? He wasn't dressed for the feast, and he wasn't sorry about it. Wasn't sorry about it, right? That's why he was cast into hell. And so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, we have the opportunity through confession, through daily reparation, through daily act of contrition, to always be prepared for the feast, to always be dressed for the feast. That's why daily conversion, daily becoming a new creation each day, right? Taking away our stony hearts and having natural hearts. It's just something we do every day. It's natural to us. We'll always be ready for the feast, right? When our time comes, when the servant comes and says, hey, it's your time. Let's go, right? And so, my brothers and sisters, Christ, such an important, this is Matthew chapter 22, the first 14 verses, such an important scripture passage. Why? Because it's about heaven, it's about hell, and it's about purgatory. All right? It's about last things. It's about judgment, heaven, hell, purgatory, right? The last things, right? And so let us be mindful, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And of course, the Blessed Virgin Mary, who sits next to Jesus, right, in heaven, as queen of heaven and earth, is always there to embrace us, always there to take us to Jesus, always there to point us to his mercy. And that is another way in which we just become natural in, 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 in our being, in terms of being merciful, being loving, being charitable, right? Being perfected in the Beatitudes, because Mary was perfected in the Beatitudes. She is our model, and she will always show us the way to Jesus. Let us now ask our Father in heaven to shed his mercy on all of our needs for the Catholic Church, the Pope, bishops, priests, deacons, religious, for our seminary study for the priesthood, for those discerning religious life, for mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, that everyone in their vocation may desire to do all things in humble obedience, for the praise, honor, and glory of God, and atonement and reparation for our sins, charity and chastity in our vocations, we pray to the Lord. For peace in the world, Eucharistic unity amongst all Christians, conversion of the world, the conversion of nations conversion of political leaders, conversion is necessary within the hierarchy of the church, our own families, our own daily personal conversions. For anyone who we wounded or led astray in our lives, for anyone who has wounded us, that we be reconciled with everyone. Uh, for the end of all the vicious attacks against life, marriage, and family, and for the least of Christ's brethren, the unborn, the poor, the sick, the thirsty, the naked, the homeless, the hungry, the imprisoned, that they may uh, seek Christ's mercy as we reach out to them in spiritual and corporal works of mercy, we pray to the Lord. And for the particular intentions of this Mass, the repose of the soul of Archbishop Michael Sheehan, John Imbarato, all the souls in purgatory, especially those that have no one to pray for them, for the intentions of those watching this Mass, attending this Mass, our personal intentions, family intentions, health intentions, ministerial intentions, the intentions of all those who we said we would pray for including those who may forget to pray for and for the intentions of those who pray for us. Encourage us and support us each day, we pray to the Lord. And we ask for this, we ask for all good things through the intercession of St. Padre Pio and the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, all the angels, martyrs, and saints in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
Bless you, Lord God of all creation, true goodness, ever see the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness, I receive the wine. We offer you fruit of the vine, work of human hands, become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted, God, the Almighty Father. As we observe this memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we bring your offerings, O Lord. We bring you our offerings, O Lord, praying to be given strength by the humanity of Christ, who offers himself to you on the cross as the unblemished oblation and lives and reigns forever and ever. Dominos Rabiscum, Sorsum Corda, Gracias Agimus Domino Deo Nostro. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds and exaltation of all the saints and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly even to the earth's end you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age when you look upon the lowliness of your handmaid. You gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son Jesus Christ our Lord. For him, the host of angels adores your majesty, rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praises we acclaim. To you, there, to you are indeed holy, O Lord, fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew falls, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fide. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, your spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, who may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Per ipsum, et con ipso, et in ipso, is tibi deo patri omnipotenti, in unitate spirita sancti, amas in all gloria, pa omnia secula seculorum. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace and grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, may we always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you, if not in our sins, and the faith of your church, and grace and grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Pax Domino, sit semper fabiscum, on your stay. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall. Blessed are you, Abili, that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Body of Christ. Lord Amos, having received this heavenly sacrament, we humbly pray, O Lord, that we who reverently celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary may merit to be partakers of your eternal banquet through Christ our Lord. Dominos, Babiscum, Benedica, Bos, Omnipotens, Deus, Patnipilius, Spiritus Sanctus, Ita Misa S. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits. Prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your praise as we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. Thank you for joining us, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I did live already this morning, so check that out. Please, again, my YouTube channel is there. Please subscribe, invite your family and friends to subscribe. Uh, but most importantly, my brothers and sisters in Christ, go out to the world today and give them heaven.